Hello and God bless you. I greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am Pastor Daryl Carter of Join Heirs Kingdom Ministries, and I come to you today in the beautiful city of Rochester, New York, at the Sanctuary of Join Heirs, and coming to you in an unconventional way, but we are in unconventional times, and um, but yet we give God the glory and the praise, and yet I'm excited. I'm excited, especially today, uh, on what I consider Victory Sunday. Uh, the start of our victory season, if you will, here on Palm Sunday is being celebrated all over our nation and land and country and uh, the beginning of Christ's Passion Week. And so, yes, this is Palm Sunday and we're declaring victory uh, over all things in the midst of all things because we have a victorious God. And I'm excited to share a word with you. Uh, today, word that will encourage you, inspire, inspire you. It's a maybe an unconventional word, and uh, for these unconventional times, and uh, those of you at Join Heirs Kingdom Ministries that are looking in and listening in, uh, get your fellowship communion cup ready. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, go forth in our fellowship of communion right in the middle of the message. Uh, it might be unconventional. We don't have our table and cloths out. We don't have the mothers and deacons here. I don't have my bishop robes on, but yet we will reverence God in the fellowship uh, of our Holy Communion and uh, give God the honor and glory due his name. We're going to do it right in the midst of our message as we encourage you. But before we go any further, let's just pray. Uh, right where you are, we thank you for joining in and listening right where you are by yourself or with your family, but we honor God for you and we pray that something's going to be said today to encourage you, to give you the strength to make it on yet through this journey. Father God, in your holy precious name, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to rise again and worship you in spirit and truth. We thank you for the mind you have given us. We thank you for the heart you have given us, heart for one another. Most importantly, a heart for you, Lord God, to love you and to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for being a God of comfort, a God of peace, of peace, a God of strength, a God that redeems and saves, a God that is victorious over all things. And Lord, because you are victorious over all things, we are victorious in all things, Father God. No matter what we're going through, Lord, we pray victory over the lives of people, over our nation, before our leaders. We pray victory. We pray God's wisdom in directing, Lord God, um, wisdom and victory, Lord God, for those that are leading various congregations all over this land and country. Father God, your grace is sufficient, and we thank you, Lord. Now, Father God, we humble ourselves yet again. It is you, Lord God, that we need to hear from and not man. So let everyone that is listening, everyone that is viewing, let them hear your words and not man's, Lord, that the body will be edified in the midst of it all. Only you and you alone will be glorified. This we declare and receive by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, as I said, I'm, I'm excited about the word today. As like I said, it is Victory Sunday. You have the victory right where you are. I want to share a portion of scripture with you. And we're going to jump right in to our teaching today on this Victory Sunday. Our uh, teaching will come from John uh, gospel according to John, the 12th chapter, and I'm going to read the 12th uh, and the 13th verses. The Bible declares in New King James Version, it reads, The next day, a great multitude that had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. My thought I want to leave with you today or share with you today, I should say, and I'm going to do it in three parts. Today is part one uh, on, on this series. Uh, all I see is victory. Say that to yourself right there. All I see is victory. Now, we at Join Heirs, uh, we, we, we have embarked this uh, year, as we enter into this year, the Lord has embarked us with a theme and a thought, a mandate of uh, this is the year of revelation and manifestation. And so you might see people of God all over the land and country doing like this. They're not saluting you, not saluting a man. If anything, we're saluting our most high God. But what this is, is I, I see clearly. When you see the saints of God doing this, they just say, yeah, in the midst of all the cloudiness, in the midst of all the dark days, I still can see clearly because God gives revelation in the midst of all the darkness. And so all I see is victory. 
Can you see victory right where you are? Can you see victory in the midst of everything you're going through, everything that you're hearing, everything that's going on around us in our land and country, in your various cities and states in this world? Can you see victory? The interesting thing about victory for every individual, I've learned that victory can have many faces, many phases, and it's a process. I'll say that again. Yes, vic victory can have many faces. It doesn't look the same for everybody. What some person says, oh, that looks like victory. Another person said, oh, no, that's defeat. Uh, many phases, different, different seasons you're going to go through, but it's still victory. And then victory is a process. It's a process. We, we already have the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But yet you have to walk this out, thing out, this victory out through your faith, through your obedience. You have to walk it out and victory will manifest in your life, in every area of your life. But I want to leave this thought to drop in your spirit that when you leave from listening and watching this broadcast, you will be declaring each and every day of your life, all I see is victory. Now, before we jump back into the scripture, I want to share this with you, which is very, very, very fitting for how we're going to uh, roll on this morning. So I was watching television one day and came across some old clips of where they were doing some reruns of uh, different boxing matches and MMA matches mixed martial arts. And so one thing about the mixed martial arts is uh, it's a little bit more graphic, if you will, a little bit more uh, physical and bloody, if you will. Uh, but one of the things that was very interesting to me, I turned when I turned it on and I, I found the channel and I decided to stop and take a look at it, it was already at the end of a fight. It was at the end of the fight and uh, one of the news anchors was already interviewing one of the participants in the fight. Now, at the time, I didn't know if he had lost or if he had won. But in looking at him, and he, they were in the ring, and the, 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 the man, uh, knew, the news anchor was interviewing him and asking him, how do you think you did, and uh, are you pleased with the outcome, and all, all that stuff. And his family was around him, and his face was all, his eyes was uh, swollen. He had cuts all over his face, bleeding from the nose, from the mouth, everything swollen on him, and his family you know, his wife and they, people around him and smiling, some celebrating, some crying, looked like. And they were wiping his face. And, and, he was, and, the, and the, the news anchor said this as he was interviewing him and getting ready to ask him a question. He says, he said, uh, you've been in a fight. You've been, this was a war. And he said, how do you feel? Because uh, uh, you don't look like you won. Going by what I'm looking at right now. And the guy said, he said, I don't know what I look like. He said, I don't have a mirror right now. He said, but all I know is I have victory. And so that, 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 that I sat there and looked at that and I, that, that inspired me because I said, wow. He said, he said, in the midst of it all, here I am turning the channel and I'm seeing just a bloody faced guy and I'm saying to myself, whoo, he, he must be lost. He must be got tore up real bad, but he was victorious. He won the fight. He didn't look like it, but he, he said, I don't care what I look like. Don't care how bad my eyes look right now. Don't care how much blood is coming out of my nose, but all I see is victory. I have the victory. And so I use that as a little back backdrop uh, to this story of the triumphal entry of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. On this, what we call, as I said earlier, Victory Week, the triumphal entry is when Jesus is coming into Jerusalem uh, at the start of his Passion Week, uh, Holy Week. And he's coming in uh, into Jerusalem uh, because he has a purpose, a determined purpose, of course, already set. Uh, can, can, you, can you see him? He, he's coming in and and it says a triumphal entry because he came in as, as it was prophesied in the book of Isaiah that he would come in as a lowly, lowly king, but, but on, riding on the donkey. Yeah, uh, but become, he came in in the procession as they did with King David and, and they laying, laying out uh, the palm trees and celebrating him. But I submit to you all, yes, Jesus, knowing what he was entering in, 
I submit that he had a mindset when he was sitting there at the entrance of the thing. Going to get to that in a second. At the entrance of the thing, he was sitting there and saying, yes, I have a long week ahead. There's some tribulation coming ahead. I know what I'm going to have to go through. Uh, for, for the people to be saved. I know what I enlisted myself to do. I know that I come to be a redeemer. I come to be a healer and a, a deliverer. I, I know what I have to go through, and I know I'm going to go through some pain. I know I'm going to go through a separation for a season. I, I know I'm going to go through some anguish, but all I see is victory. He, he didn't just see victory because they were laying out uh, the palm trees on the ground and, and they were yelling, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be the one that comes in the name of the Lord, even the king, the king of Israel. He, he wasn't just seeing victory, victory because they were celebrating him, but he was seeing victory because he knew the end of a thing from the beginning. Even though he knew what he was going to have to go through, he knew he was going to be victorious. And because he was going to be victorious, he was going to be victorious over death, hell, and the grave and everything that leads up to it. He already had the victory from the point of the entrance. Now, the triumphal entry, as we're celebrating here on Victory Sunday, Palm Sunday, the triumphal entry, uh, we will we'll find in the uh, passages in Matthew 21 and Mark 11, and, and Luke 19 and John 12, you, you'll find uh, talks about uh, Jesus uh, getting ready for the triumphant, the victorious entry. And, and you'll, you'll find where they, Jesus had told the disciples to go and get a coat, a coat that would be tied up and no one was paying attention to the coat. Uh, the coat that one uh, generally said that was untamed. But tell them that the Lord, if anyone asks you why you're unloosing, untying the coat, tell them that the Lord has need of it. The Lord, the Lord has need of it. And so, and so Jesus, they would, they would throw, the disciples would get the coat. They would walk in obedience and, and do what God said. And, and they would throw their clothes on the coat. And then Jesus would sit on the coat. And he would sit on that coat, on that donkey, as he get ready to enter Jerusalem, the, 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 the entrance of his victory season. Say the, say the entrance of my victory season. So now I want to stop right there and, and encourage someone. It, it's not about what you're looking like. And, and, and it's not about how you got there to the entrance of your victory season. It's all about you made it. See, see, Jesus showed up. And, and when Jesus showed up, he showed up. He, yeah, he was ready to show out. But when he showed up, he didn't show up like they were expecting. Uh, you know, everything Jesus did was uh, not common, and, and that's why they were rejecting Jesus and, and denying him and challenging him of uh, him really being the king because he didn't look the part. See, see, when you, you're in victory already. The, your victory season has started already, saints of God. Some woman I'm talking to right now, uh, you showed up. You, you got up this morning. You're already in victory. See, every, it's not about what you're looking like. It's not about what you arrive in. See, Jesus didn't arrive in a chariot. He arrived on a lowly, on a donkey, a, a borrowed donkey, one that was untamed. Uh, one that man couldn't 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 do anything with. And see, see, see someone out there, you you feel like that donkey that was tied up, that was uh just left alone, and they said that you were untamed and uncontrollable or, or undisciplined or whatever. But no, what if you was just set up in position to be used by God? See, 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 man can never use the donkey the way they wanted to because God needed something that was untamed for the uncommon. And so God put his glory on the untamed. He put, he sat himself, he sat his glory on the uncommon. God, in the beginning of your victory season, he wants to sit himself on your shoulders. See, everyone else, you were so busy worrying about everybody else knowing who you were. But no, God had you isolated for a reason. God had you isolated for such a time as this. And so God showed up, Jesus showed up on the donkey in the beginning of his victory season, victory week. And it's a not, like I said, let me go back. It's not what you showed up in. It's not even how you showed up, but you made it. 
See, see, some people have showed up. You made it through some hurts and pains, but I made it. Uh, all I see is victory. I, some have made it limping, but I made it. Some have, see, some have made it all torn up and scarred up, abandoned and, and rejected by people, but I made it. I made it to the point of my destined place. I made it to the point where God is getting ready to show himself strong and mighty. This is my victory season. I might have some scars and some tears, but I made it. I, 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 didn't, I didn't arrive like the next person. I don't have the clothes like the next person. I don't have the Mercedes or the Cadillac like the next person. But you know what? I've arrived. I've arrived with my hands lifted up. I arrived knowing whose I am and knowing what God is. I arrived to the place of destiny. It's not about, see, people are so worried about, they looking at people and sizing them up, sizing their victory up based on what they look like, what they have, what they connected to and all that. No, I'm, in, I'm victorious because I showed up. They didn't think I was going to make it, but you made it. They didn't think you would be here, but you made it. Jesus was, when he was entering in, he was saying, all I see is victory. Yes, some not going to understand uh, why they celebrate and, and why they saying the Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be the one that comes in the name of the Lord. Some is going to be rejecting how you showed up, going to be rejecting what you look like, what your background is, but you are victorious, not based on their opinion not based on their celebration, but based on the fact that you showed up to the destined place that God has already purposed for you to be. I'm, uh, you need to celebrate. I'm celebrating. You need to celebrate that you're at the entrance of your victory season. Yeah, you need to take a pause right there. Clap your hands to the Lord and say, Lord, I thank you. I made it this far. They didn't think I was going to make it, but I'm here today. I'm, I'm, some, of us, some of us hurting and in pain. You lost some people along the way, but you're victorious, not because of who's with you, but you're victorious because of who you are and that you made it this far. I made it to the entrance of my victory season, but now it's a process. You, there's some things yet to manifest, and, 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 and uh, there's some things yet to come out of this process of seeing victory. Some say, all I see is victory. It don't matter how I got here, but all I see is victory. And so can I walk you through a real quick timeline? Uh, 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 so, so now on that Sunday was the entrance. You showed up. You're victorious because you showed up. Now let God show up. Now on that Monday, uh, there's, there's, there's something you're going to have to go through. On that Monday, we'll find in Matthew 21 and in Mark 11, we'll find that there was the cursing of the fig tree. You might say, Pastor Carter, how does this tie in to my victory season? Well, Jesus, when he when he was traveling now, and he was he was going on further along there in Jerusalem, and he 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 was he hungered and he saw a fig tree afar off that had leaves on it. So it looked like it was producing something. He get up to the fig tree, and though it wasn't the season of figs, it had leaves. It looked like it had something. And he began to curse the fig tree and say, never, no, no one, no one, would ever again eat a fruit of off of this tree. And so you might say, okay, how does that tie into my victory season? You are going to have to rebuke the things that are dead and not producing in your life. For you to walk in victory, you're going to have to rebuke the dead things and let go of the things that are not producing in your life. You have some people that's holding on to you that they ain't producing nothing for the, the kingdom of God. They are not pushing you nowhere. There they're, is it's no victory. They look like they have some fruit, but their lives ain't showing nothing. They're, they they, they have a form of godliness, but that's all they have, a form. The fig tree had leaves. And, and so if you have leaves, Jesus was saying, no, I don't care what season you're in. You showing me you have leaves. I expect some fruit with those leaves. And here we have people, you have people connected to you and you're trying to walk in victory every day, but you have some false people connected to you. They have leaves with no power, no fruit, no fruit of the spirit uh, producing out of their lives. They don't know how to walk in meekness and love and kindness and joy and long suffering and faith and temperance. They don't know how to walk in the new. There's no fruit manifesting out of their lives. They just full of leaves. You, in this season of victory, will have to rebuke the dead things, rebuke the things that are not producing, and let them go. 
Let them go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said it. For you to have victory, you're going to have to let dead things go. Type to someone. Take someone. Leave a comment right there on YouTube. Say, yeah, Pastor, I agree with you. I have to let the dead things go. I got to rebuke the things that are not producing in my life. And even if there's some things that you tie to and you're not producing anything to the glory of God, in your life, you need to rechannel, refocus. Lord, redirect my assignment. Redirect me to the where I can be fruitful, Lord, in the things you have called me to do. On that Monday, he was walking through and in victory week. So part of his victory, one of the phases or one of the process, part of the processes of walking in victory is he cursed the fig tree. You're going to have to rebuke things that do not produce in your life. The next thing he did on that very same Monday he went on a little further, and then he went and he got to the temple. Uh, it tells us in Matthew 21 and Mark 11 and in Luke 19 that he went in cleansing, cleansing the temple. He walked in there and they were doing everything but giving glory to God, selling and gambling, all that stuff. Jesus turned over the tables, turned over the tables. He said, this is my, my, my house of God shall be a, a house of prayer. You turn into a, a den of thieves and you're doing everything. So this symbolizes for you to have victory in this process. One of the phases you're going to have to do, you're going to have to clean your house. All I see is victory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope y'all still with me. You're going to have to clean your house. Stop telling folks how blessed you are, how victorious. I'm blessed and highly favored. All the stuff we love to say. And your house is dirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the place where you and God are supposed to be the most intimate at home. The place where you're supposed to be, get your uh, foundation and structure and discipline to then duplicate everything else in the world in home. Your house is dirty. You, you got to clean your own front door. As the song said before you try to sweep around mine, clean your own front door. Jesus went in there and said, wait a minute. And he said he started cleaning the house of God. You and I, you let's clean house. In this season, during this time, while we were in the midst of this uh, moving a pandemic and it's soon to be over, just wait until God do what he's going to do. It's soon to be over. Don't I ain't put no timeline on it, but faithful is he. God is faithful. And so in the midst of it all, while we're in the midst of it, you still victorious, but clean your house. Take time and clean your house. Get your life together. Check your character. Check your discipline. Check your motives. Check your connection. Clean your house. Am I bringing things to the house of God that are godly? Because some of us bring mess from our house to the house of God. And we're not even bringing it to get it cleaned up. Lord, here I am. No, we're not even in that position yet. We want to walk in victory, but how can you be victorious when there's foolishness going on in your house? They weren't worshiping God in the temple. They were, they were doing everything. They let everything else filter in into the temple and it became okay. Oh, people of God, no, 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 no. We can't just, I don't care what the world is doing. I don't care how the, the world is living. If you are doing something that is a, a direct uh, disregard to the laws of God, the rules of God, the character of God, the holiness of God, you need to clean your house. You will not have any victory with a dirty house. Stop saying it. Stop prophet lying to yourself. You will not have any victory with a dirty house. I hope I'm helping somebody. We talk, I'm talking about victory. Still talking about victory. You had to clean out. He cleansed the temple. Get things back in order. So I can be, so, so I can be, yo, this is your first temple. Cleanse the temple. Get every, get your, get your heart right. Lord created me a clean heart. Renew the right spirit in me. Get to a place of repentance and a place of a total devotion to God where God can dwell with you, where he don't have to avoid you because there's your house is dirty. Clean your house, saints. People of God, clean your house. How can you walk in victory? with a dirty house. This is your victory season. All I see is victory. And if I'm saying all I see is victory, that means, oh, hey, I'm going to do whatever I have to do to clean my house. And so it's a good time in the time of quarantine, climate, isolation, whatever you're calling it, whatever they're calling it, whatever we in, clean your house. Yeah, your physical house, but clean this spiritual temple. Clean this temple 
so God can dwell with you. You will not have victory with a dirty temple. Pause. Think about it. You will not have victory with a dirty temple. Y'all ready to go on on victory? All right. Tell your neighbor, tell your friend, shout into the living room. Hey, I'm going on in victory. So deal with the things that don't produce. Clean the temple. And so on the next day, Tuesday, it was a busy Tuesday, they call it. Uh, uh, and so uh, we find Jesus here is interesting. On this Tuesday, he gave some lessons, some more lessons about the fig tree, and he was giving them some warnings, parable. He had some debates with the Jewish leaders. He uh, he had to, uh, a discourse of the la on the last things. But one of the interesting things I want to uh, pick out here, here on this Tuesday here, uh, Jesus was challenged of his authority. They challenged his authority. I submit to you, for you to have victory, for you to walk in victory, they may challenge your authority, but don't let the challenges change you. Don't let the challenges change you. They were trying to get God to just get him to mess up to say something because they were trying to bring accusation against him, trying to challenge who he was. And Jesus didn't fall into it. He didn't prove himself the way they wanted him to prove himself they would ask him a question he would ask them a question back and then when it puzzled them they wouldn't they wouldn't want to answer because they say well if we answer one way uh when he's talking about them then what about the baptism of john was from heaven or from man he and they came back and said oh we don't know because they didn't know how to answer and so he said well nothing neither what i will tell you by what authority that i'm operating in see they challenged his authority but he didn't let the challenge change him see some of us when we when your anointing is challenged your, your title is challenged. Oh, now you, you get huffy and puffy. You get mad. And now you try to prove that you saved. Prove that you anointed. No, you letting their challenge change you. You have to be, and when you're in victory, Jesus, he, he dealt with them. He, he shared, they asked a question. He asked them a question. And then they couldn't answer. He kept it moving. He didn't let them change him. I'm not going to let y'all get me off my assignment. I, when I know who I am, when I know I'm a child of God, when I know I'm called of God, it don't matter what title people put on you, what labels people put on you, how big, how small your church is, what your family dynamics is, how much money you got in your bank, how many degrees you have. Don't, man, people challenging where you came from. They don't know your testimony. You know your testimony. You know where God brought you from. Don't let people challenging your authority, challenging, oh, challenging your wisdom, challenging your knowledge of God, challenging your relation with God. Don't let the challenge of people change you. For you to walk and stand in victory, you got to know who you are and whose you are. I'm victorious because all I see is victory. It don't matter what you say about me. It don't matter how you challenge me. I'm not going to get into a debate with you. I'm not going to argue and fuss with you. I'm not going to have to prove myself to you. How do we have to think about it? Why in the world would you have to prove yourself to another man or woman when God is already called you his own when God has already said this is my son this is my daughter in whom I'm well pleased when God has already shared with you his love and kind of his purpose and his plan for you you don't have to change they might challenge your authority whether it's in the church just as a child of God in life they might challenge you don't let the challenges change your character. You stay in your victory. Don't let the challenges change your character. Jesus didn't let any challenge change him. So after that busy Tuesday, as you go on in the process of walking in your victory, Jesus came to what they, some people call it silent Wednesday, or they call it spy Wednesday, uh, conspiracy time. Yes, 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 conspiracy time. I need to submit this to you or to share this with you. Listen, those of us who have been called to do something great by God, oh, there's going to be some conspiracy against you. Some you might never even know it happened. But yeah, just like with Jesus in Matthew 26 and Mark 14 and Luke 22, uh, they were conspired. There was a, the conspiracy of the chief priests of the different regions in the land of there in Jerusalem. They were conspiring, what can we do with this Jesus? How can we get, how can we destroy? They were conspiring to come against him, to destroy him, to stop him. The conspiracy can't stop you. 
The conspiracy won't control you. The conspiracy cannot hinder you because what I submit to you here is the plot is never greater than the plan. Let them plot against you. You and your victory season. See, many times we get caught up arguing when we find out about a plot. You get caught up arguing, oh, why y'all plotting against me? I thought you was this. Oh, I thought you was for me. This like that. No, I've learned in my life, because all I see is victory, I learn when I hear or don't hear or whatever, but when I know anyone may be plotting against me, my family, or, or against the church or what God has called us to do, I start glorifying God. Because it, it means I must be doing something that's really aggravating the mess out of them. You must be walking in a way. If they got to start plotting and conspiring to try to stop you, boy, Satan is mad at you. People jealous of you. But you know what? That's their problem. Because their plot is not greater than God's plan. I know the plans I have for, for you, saith the Lord. Woo, thoughts are good. Uh, plans are good and evil, not of evil to give you an expecting end. He know the, how he's thought about you. He has some certain plans for you and the plans of God is greater than any plot. Let them conspire. Stop arguing with them, trying to find out what you're talking about. It don't matter. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. All I see is victory. And at the end of the day, according to the word of God, Romans 8, 28, and we know all things work together for the good to them who are the called, who love God, who are the called according to his purpose. Everything, even the plot, is going to work for me. So whatever they're conspiring, go ahead and be about your business. Go ahead and conspire. Lie. Plan it all out. Do whatever. Because the plot is never greater than the plan. You have victory. You have victory. You have victory in remembering and knowing that no matter what the conspiracy is, no matter what the plan of the enemy is, Jesus dealt with it. He knew it. It was, he kept silent about it because it played its course. It was part of it. All. Oh, Y'all ready to walk on in victory? We almost done. Someone say, All I see is victory. All I see is victory. So now on Thursday, uh, uh commandment. Monday, Thursday, as they say, Monday, Thursday, uh, the time of, oh, the time of preparation, uh, the time when uh, it, it, it's all, everything about to start manifesting. And see, you're going to get a point in your victory season where everything is uh, going to start manifesting. And it's it going to be some good stuff and some bad stuff according to how you view it in the physical, but it's all going to work for your good. It's going to work for your good. And so we know on this Thursday here in Holy Week, uh, there was the last supper he was having there in the upper room with his disciples. And, and also what's taking place uh, during this time, I told you, get your communion cups ready. We're going to go ahead and do it. Uh, during the last supper, and also there was a time of Gethsemane and on this Thursday, and then there was a betrayal and, and all that stuff. So we're going to get to all that stuff. All this stuff was taking place on that Thursday. On that Thursday, he had to go through some stuff. On that Thursday, and uh, and so, but 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 what they did on that Thursday, he at the Last Supper there on Thursday, he was there in the upper room with his disciples, and and this is not traditional. Join Edge, though, y'all. Y'all got your fellowship cup. Uh, get ready. Here we go. And so it was not. It wasn't traditional. But say right now, all I see is victory. Uh, the Bible tells us that, and uh, he, they had took it at the end of supper and. And he got ready and he, he took some bread. And the Bible says there, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. Wait a minute, wait, wait, right? Stop right there. When he had given thanks. Oh, a, a big key of your victory is your thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, he was giving thanks for all that he had been through. He was giving thanks for those that were around him, the, 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 the friends and the foes. He was giving thanks. See, you have to learn how to thank God for your friends and your enemies. Thank God for the Judas, and we'll get to that in a second. Thank God for those that are praying for you and those that are conspiring against you. Thank God for all the stuff you went through to get to the, this point. So dear Jesus, he was just thanking God. Lord, thank you for allowing me to be used by you. Lord, thank you, thank you, Lord, for using me as, as the vessel of deliverance and salvation to your people. Lord, thank you, Lord, for being faithful. Jesus, he, the Bible said he, he had given thanks. Someone say, thank you, Lord. I'm, I'm made it this far. Thank you, Lord. I'm at a point, and I still, Jesus knew this was beautiful to me. He was giving thanks. Can you give thanks when you still know 
you got some persecution left ahead. He wasn't just giving thanks because it was all over. He was giving thanks because, Lord, I'm thanking you ahead of time because you're about to help me through. You're about to grace me through what I have to go through. I thank you for this appointed time and appointed people. We have to learn how to be thankful. You can't have any victory. You can't have any sustained victory if you don't have no gratefulness in your heart. If you have no thanksgiving, God bless you, in your heart. You can't have continued victory where there is no thanksgiving. There is no victory. I'll say it again. Where there is no thanksgiving, there will be no victory. He, he was thankful. And, and, and the Bible says he broke it. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Right before we eat, he said, it, it, it is broken for you. See, he went through some broken, I feel like preaching, boy. He went through some brokenness. So, you, you can get over, overcome any brokenness. See, he, he, he went through some stuff. He, he, he said, my body, which is broken for you, Lord. Uh, it, it was broken for the Lord. It was broken for you as well, you and I as well. He went through some brokenness so you can be redeemed from your brokenness. He went through some brokenness so you can rebound from some brokenness, from some heartaches, from some bad times. He went, his body was broken so you have victory over any brokenness. Oh, someone say thanks right now. See, see, I was broken in some areas, in my, in my spirit, in my self-esteem, in my confidence, uh, in who I was. I was broken in some areas of how I thought about myself. But when I realized my victory that already is in Christ Jesus, I was, de I, I was delivered out of brokenness when he was broken for me. He was broken so you wouldn't be broken. He was broken so you, would, you and I would be delivered from brokenness. And he, he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Join heirs, saints of God. Let us eat together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so in the same manner, the Bible says, happening on Thursday at the upper room, in the same manner, he took the cup and saying, this cup, is the new covenant in my blood. Woo! Thank you, Lord. The new covenant. You have to understand you are under a new agreement. You have to understand in your victory season, your victory, you are under new promises. Oh, promises not of not, not based on the, the lambs and the goat, but based on the one true sacrifice, the, 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 the chief priest himself. Uh, uh, on the blood of the precious lamb, the Lord, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You have new covenant with new promises. God is now going to dwell in your heart. He's going to be with you. He's going to make sure the word spoken over our life, it comes to manifestation. I'm under a new agreement. I'm under a new covenant. I have victory in his blood. I'm under a new contract. The old contract. Is passed away. The, the, the old contract, uh, it don't have any weight. But the new covenant I have, the new covenant I have, Jesus said, this cup, this is the new covenant, the new promise, the new agreement. God is doing, he, he's doing a new thing in you. You have to realize no matter what you went through before now, whatever you went through before Christ, before your new relationship in Christ, if any man be in Christ, He's a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, everything, all things become new. Someone say, I'm brand new. Shout it right now in the heavenlies, in your kitchen and living room. I'm brand new. I'm brand new in Christ Jesus. All the old stuff can't hold me down. The guilt of my past. I'm under a new covenant. I'm under a new agreement. I'm under a new promise, a greater promise, a stronger promise. That God himself has promised me he would be my God. I would be his child. There might be someone listening. You don't even know God as your personal savior. But let me tell you, the reason why you and I have victory is because of the shedding of his blood. The reason why you and I have victory is because he loved enough, loved us enough to die on a cross for us. 
He paid the price for us. You and I were an enemy with God. We were enemy, enemy, enemies with God. But Jesus became our peace. He became the mediator. He became the one to appease God. He took on our sin, the sin of the world, the sin of everyone. He took on our sin and he allowed himself to be bludgeoned, beat, ridiculed, crucified for your saving grace. That's victory. All I see is victory. All I see is victory. I'm under a new promise. God is going to heal me. God is going to deliver me. I'm under a new promise. God is going to bring me out. God is going to save my family. He's going to save my children and my grandchildren. I'm under, under a new promise. God is going to renew my mind. He's going to renew my hope. There's a lot of hopelessness going on. But I declare, we are to, to echoes, saints of God, let the world know we under a new promise with God. He won't leave me like this. Love always comes. If you read your Bible, love always comes and rescues us at the appointed time. I'm under a new promise. God ain't going to leave me in turmoil. He ain't going to allow me to see corruption. He ain't going to leave my soul in hell. I'm under a new promise. God promised that he would heal me. He promised that he would deliver you. He promised that he would provide for you. He promised that he would take care of you. You and I are under a new promise. That's why all I see is victory. All I see is victory. I can see clearly now. Through the storm, through the mess, through the pandemic, through the tears, through the crying, through the death, through the hurting, through the economy uh, falling apart. All I see is victory. Why? Because I'm under a promise. I'm under a blood promise. He said, take this cup, this doing it, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Saints of God, thanking God. Let us drink together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're under a new promise. And so, in your victory season, understanding you're under a new promise, understanding you need some thanksgiving, and then understanding you're going to go through in your victory season, in the, in the phase of victory, in the faces of victory, you have to get to a nevertheless moment. Nevertheless moment. Find on that Thursday, we found later on that Thursday, we find Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane. In the garden of pressing, where you have to let God press everything out of you that, that, would, that would try to hinder you from being that everything God called you to be. You, you got you to gotta, you gotta get to the point as Jesus did. Hey, he said, Father, this cup could pass from me. But Lord, not, nevertheless, not my will, your will be done. For you to have victory, you have to get to your nevertheless moment. Oh, if you, if you saints of God, if you've been walking this life and walking in relation with God and you haven't came to a nevertheless moment, that nevertheless moment is, Lord, I don't care what it takes. Not my will, but your will be done. Lord, whatever you need to do. Lord, I wish I didn't have to go through this. But Lord, if that's the path for me, if that's what you have purpose for me, then Lord, let your will be done. Nevertheless, I'm going to trust God. Nevertheless, I'm going to see God make, uh, make a way out of no way. Nevertheless, I, if I got to let some people go, Lord, I'm still going to believe you. Lord, if I lose my job, nevertheless, I'm going to trust you. Lord, if I lose my money, nevertheless, Lord God, you are faithful. Lord, if I, you lose all the food, Lord God, if I lose some health and strength along this journey and process, Lord, nevertheless, you are worthy and I will give you a yet praise. Nevertheless, God is going to bring me through. Nevertheless, I see victory. I still see victory. All I see is victory. I might be in pain. I might go through some anguish. I'm going to go through some crying and some tears. I'm going to hurt sometimes, but I still see victory. Nevertheless, and, and that is an interesting thing in your victory walk. Because people, when they're looking at you, like they did with that boxer that was all beat up, he said, y'all looking at what I look like. 
Whoo, you're looking at the rounds that I went through. And I was getting my face beat in and my body was getting all bludgeoned. But when you look at me, I might look like I've been beat up. Might look like I lost a lot of battles. Have some scars. But nevertheless, all I see is victory. All I see is victory. Lord, I see you. Can you see God in the time of anguish and turmoil? Can you press on? Can you press on in the midst of this? Can you press on? Can you yet trust God when there's no timetable, when the storm will end, when the pandemic will end, when the crisis will be over? Nevertheless, I'll trust you. It's only been about two or three weeks. But what if it turns into two or three months? Will you still press on? Will you still be able to lift up your God and say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I trust you. Nevertheless, I'm going to give you the glory. Nevertheless, Lord, I'm going to praise your name. Nevertheless, I still see victory. We've been in it for a couple months, but I still see victory. Can you endure? Can you let God press? Press you. Press you. Would you even be crazy enough to say, Lord, if you have to press me some more, press me. And some of y'all right now saying, oh, wait a minute, Pastor D. I don't been pressed enough. I don't know what else God can squeeze out of me. But what if the nevertheless is saying just a little bit more pressing? A little bit more pressing, woman of God. A little bit more pressing, man of God, child of God. If, what if God in this season wants to press you a little bit more? You thought you seen your greatest glory dripping out of you. God's greatest glory dripping out. You thought God pressed all your potential out of you. What if I submit, submit to you right now? During this victory season, there's another dimension of pressing with greater strength coming out of this. Greater wisdom coming out of this. Greater determination coming out of this. A greater character coming out of this. A greater you coming out of this. What if God said, I need to press you a little bit more. I know you've been hurt. I know you are even crying, but I need you. I need you to let God press you and you still see victory. Press me, Lord. Press me again, Lord. I, Lord, I thought, I thought all the old man was dead. Lord, press me again. Press me, Lord. Press me till I look like you. Press me, Lord God, till I honor you. Press me, Lord God, till I magnify you. Press me, Lord God, till I represent you and worship you in all I do. Lord, press me till all nothing but your glory remains. That's victory. That's victory. And let me, let me, let, let me, let me share this with you. Let's get ready to close. Final thing I'm sharing with you. This is part one. Final thing I'm sharing with you. Today for your victory season. All I see is victory. There will be a betrayal that manifests. On that Thursday, after the Last Supper, after the institution, Implementing of the sacrament, sacred sacrament we call Holy Communion. After the pressing in the Garden of Gethsemane, there was the manifestation of the portrayal. I submit to you, in this season, your victory season, you're about to say, thank you, Jesus, for revealing Judas. Thank you, Jesus, for revealing Judas. Judas had to show himself because Judas showing himself and betraying God was the last piece of the puzzle to get me to my next dimension. It used to say my, oh, the, uh, my enemies keep on blessing me. <laughs> Woo! In this your victory season, get ready for Judas to be manifested. And you're going to say, thank you, Jesus, for revealing Judas. See, it's all right. See, it, yeah, it's going to hurt. Yeah, I'm not going to say it. It's going to hurt when that Judas is revealed, but it's going to help. 
We said it last week. The, the, the hurt is helping us. It, it, it might hurt when you find out who's been betraying you. It might hurt when you find out who, who didn't want you to succeed, who was praying and plotting against you. It might hurt, but it's going to be a blessing. You will say, thank you, Jesus, for revealing Judas. Because the last thing that had to happen before Jesus was pushed into his next dimension, it had to be the manifestation of the Judas in his life. Thank you, Jesus, for revealing Judas, because I see victory in all of this. Because, see, see, I, I, I want to know who's with me in these last days. Uh, time is winding up, saints of God. You need to know who's for you and who's against you. And, Lord, uh, let me see, and see, so what, what some of us do is, Lord, I pray don't be this person. Pray don't be that person. Pray don't be, no, 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 no. You just say, Lord, I trust you. Lord, I trust you. Whoever, whoever it is in my camp, at the, at the uh, manifested time, at the appointed time, you about to manifest who the Judas is in my life. Once I know who the Judas is, I know how to deal with him. I can love him from a distance. But thank you, Jesus, for revealing Judas. I know who not to pour into anymore. I know who know how to, when they say they're praying for you, but they're really plotting against you. As long as I know, I don't have to argue with the Judas. Thank you, Lord, for manifesting the Judas. It's all part of your victory season. Woo! It's all a part of your victory season. Plots being revealed, uh, rebuking dead things, getting rid of things that's not producing in your life. The Judas being revealed. God honoring you and God putting you in a position of knowing uh, that it's not about uh, what, how you got there, but that you made it. All these things are happening in your victory season. All I see over your life is victory. Victory when you come, victory when you go. Victory for you, victory for your children. All I see is victory. That night after Judas betrayed him, he was going on and he had a trial before the Jewish authorities. That night, they was going to save him over for, they found no fault that night but told him that he had to go before Pilate. And so they threw him down in a pit on that Thursday night. And on Friday, Good Friday, I'll tell you in part two what happened. But on that Thursday night, on that Thursday night, I submit to you in that cold pit that they threw him down in that hole waiting for his trial I submit to you Jesus still said all I see is victory all I see is victory rejoice people of God God has given us the victory he has made you the head and not the tail he has saved and redeemed us and he love us. Listen, I'm going to be excited to share the rest of this with you. I'll have a, a special edition on Good Friday. And then Lord giving us liberty, we'll close it out next week. Part two and three of this. All I see is victory. Until then, we are victorious in Christ Jesus. You are victorious right where you are. You are victorious in the midst of the storm. Keep your eyes on God. Keep your eyes focused on his plan. Don't worry about the plot. Don't worry about the conspiracy. Don't worry about the things that you got to curse, rebuke, and get rid of the things that's not producing in your life. Don't worry about how people looking at you because you don't look the part. You don't look anointed. You don't look like the called one. Know that you are chosen. And you go forth in life saying, all I see is victory. I pray that something has been said to encourage you to stir you a little bit, to let you know you in your victory season. And we're, we're, we're always victorious because the Bible declares we're children. And Romans 8 and 17 says, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together.